from this we are going to learn the internal and external fire hydrant systems and hosel systems these are some of the tutorial explanation of these systems and elaborately we will learn from the oncoming slides that as per the requirement of NBC 2000 fire building code part 4 how this should be designed and how it should be applied and followed this slides explain us the fire hydrant system requirement for internal and external application for non-industrial buildings. So non-industrial buildings are having their specific requirement and generally we are covering in this training the services for the residential, commercial buildings which are not including the industrial buildings. See a general a definition fixed by the NBC for the high rise building. What is high rise building? Any building which is higher than 22 meter from the pavement level is in the category of high rise building. We should not be confused with the other high rise buildings which are going in the modern constructions more than 500 meters. Certain examples like Burj Khalifa which is almost 800 some odd meters high. Those are in the category of super high rise buildings. So what we see that for buildings over 60 meters in height, hydrant system may either be designed as above or may be divided into pressure zones. This part of design or the explanation we will be covering in the advanced training for the design of the high rise building more than 60 meter heights. The category of these buildings are duly explained in the table 23 part 4 of NBC 2005. What are the minimum requirement and where the hydrant should be applied. The NBC requirement for that in case of building having a plinth area in excess of 750 meter square it must be provided with the hydrant protection that is for the external hydrant. For the internal hydrant these are generally provided in the staircase landing of every floor. The location of those hydrant should be near the staircase. The purpose of this remains the fellow or the firefighters who are operating this system should have a place to escape when the fire becomes uncontrollable. At least one hydrant post shall be provided for every 60 meter of external wall measurement in case of light hazard. This is the requirement for the type of hazard category as we have already seen our previous parts 
where the occupancies are separated according to the hazard. Generally, we are covering here the light hazard and the ordinary hazard. So for light hazard, the external hydrant must be placed not more than 60 meter spacing. And for ordinary hazard occupancy, it should not be 45 meter spacing. And for the high hazard, these are generally the industrial hazards or liquid fuels, etc., hazardous materials. Should not be placed more than 30 meter spacing. The stand pipe. What is stand pipes? Stand pipe where the hydrants, external hydrants are to be mounted must have a minimum pipe diameter of 80 millimeters for the single headed hydrants and 100 millimeter for double headed hydrants and for monitors of 63 mm or 75 mm it should be 75 millimeter dia. Double hydrant shall consist of two separate landing walls. A single control wall will not be permitted. What does it mean? It means in case where the double hydrants are provided, each hydrant should be separated by a separate wall for the purpose of maintenance and its use. This table is a reprint from the NBC part 4. This is very clearly mentioned for the type of hazard as we are discussing the occupancy of non industrial buildings where the single hydrant should be provided and where the double hydrant should be provided. You will notice from here this is the size of the risers. Okay, with this specific category of the occupancy, which is duly explained in the table 23, and it must be referred whenever we are going to size this kind of buildings. So these are the areas which will require a hundred millimeter dia risers and the single hydrant. And the, these are the areas which will be provided with, with the 150 mm dia risers. And what are those categories? Those categories are actually explained over here. See the hotels above 30 meters in height, all buildings classified under 2 and 3 above 30 meters in height. You will notice that as we discuss the type of occupancy, you may find that some of the buildings are in the light hazard category, but here they are considered for the ordinary hazard. So we should not mix up, we should adhere to what these things or these requirements are shown and should be applied for sizing the risers and providing the number of hydrants. This is what we see over here. Every hydrant are provided with this walls, hydrant walls. And this is a separate riser which will be for the supplying the hydrant. In particular, what we notice here there are three pipes as we have seen earlier also from the risers for the risers which are branched 
from the discharge header of the pumps these three connections are taken one is for the hydrant supply second for the sprinkler supply and the third one these are used for the drain connection and the for testing of the systems with this floor control valve assembly this we have already explained in our designs where these things are provided these are provided at every zone where the sprinklers are being supplied this is the element shown for the light hazard buildings which are 15 meter in less less than 35 meters in height you will notice here these are supplied from the roof tank which has been fed by a separate pumps and to boost the pressures a pump is required this pump will be according to the notes explained in the table 23 and these are a generally dry risers which are not actually pressurized. This can also be fed from the fire brigade. So we have to provide a quick connection to supply the water from the fire brigade also. These are hose reels. Where the hose reels are provided? Hose reels are used as a first aid for the firefighting systems like portable fire extinguishers etc. And it can be operated by the common man because the pressure supplied to these hose reels are low which can be handled in case of emergency by the occupants but the hydrants are generally used and operated by the fire brigade trained people or firefighters the applications of these things are having the same that it should be provided roughly about 30 meters apart so it means that distance is a walking distance not a crow flight type or straight dimensions through the walls or other things so that is the basic requirement for the placement of the hose reels these are the fire extinguishers and fire extinguishers as we had talked earlier also now also we explained these are rated as per the type of fires and this is also a first aid fire protection system which can be operated by the occupants and for type of fire these are generally marked or printed on the fire extinguisher itself about this application on the type of fire I will not go further in explaining this because this is already seen and it has been already been explained that class A fires and modern hazard these categories for the fire extinguishers when we had gone through in our part one these were explained in general the fire hydrant should be placed not more than the walking distance of 25 meters and for all practical purpose ABC fire extinguishers are used what is ABC fire extinguishers A, B and C these explain the class of fires which you already learned C 
is for the electrical fire okay a for the combustible material like papers or and b where the combustibility or the size of storage and other things of the class a materials are there if these things are applied and these are always placed handy at the walking distance and it can be used by the occupants themselves see this category which we have said in the previous slide that fire extinguishers which is may be water pressurized these are generally good for the paper products or something like that which can be extinguished and dry chemicals this fire extinguisher as we see from here a b c means it, it can be applied for all the three kind of fires and which is very commonly used as a first aid carbon di oxide extinguisher these are the type of extinguisher which are generally used in the live current system where you might find a fire short circuiting and the sparks or some fire on the light wires etc are there foam extinguishers are used for the flammable liquids this works as a blanket on the spilled liquid energizing gas filled fire extinguishers are used where the application of this kind of a extinguisher will not damage the electronic product like computers rooms etc etc this is how to select what is the size and other things these are a complete explanatory notes it should be read by the person who is designing where it is going to place those things and the size of the extinguishers so this is a self explanatory and you should be able to work according to this it is a general rule rule we have to follow the same distance 75 feet or 25 meters it should be placed of the walking distance of those things this is as per the ice code and this is the same thing which we have categorically discussed class a fire water expel type extinguisher water expelling type extinguisher class b foam dry powder vaporizing liquid and carbon dioxide class c dry powder vaporizing liquids this all will be discussed and explained and this conclude our part 3 hope it may fulfill the requirement otherwise also in case there are certain clarifications and other things are required you can contact mr habib ahmed for any further clarifications and thank you very much